Blog Talk Radio. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Hi everyone, this is Natalie, this is Nasa Dijan, and we are on Chatting with Nat. We have the honor of having singer-songwriter Megan Hallett, the slack and grease too, hailing from the humble outskirts of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Award-winning singer-songwriter Megan Paulette is forced to be reckoned with, drawing inspiration from the works of Frank Zappa, yes, Aretha Franklin, Sarah Bareilles, and Helton John. Megan's music is a melting pot of lush, edgy, emotionally driven vocals and dynamic instrumental soundscapes with a contemporary twist. Let's give her a round of applause. What are you jumping? How are you doing, Megan? I'm doing great, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me. I feel just great. Now, I'm just going to tell you this. Now, this on-air thing is saying that there's 13 minutes left, but it's okay. It'll it'll continue to stream, and people will be able to listen to it later. I don't know what's going on with Blog Talk Radio, but this is life. This is just the inner workings of our our lives as independent artists and trying to do so many things at the same time. So. How have you been during this whole pandemic, uh, elections, George Floyd, COVID had some babies, monkeypox, Roe versus Wade, a new virus in China, uh, polio, West Nile virus, tsunami, earthquakes, cicadas, kind of life. <laughs> How have you been? I feel like we're all just taking it one day at a time, you know. It's trying to do the best that we can to survive and to navigate through it. I have to pinch myself every morning because <laughs> I have to see if I'm still, if if I'm not in the twilight zone, if I'm in a different era, um, to see if this really happened. All of this is happening in the world, and yeah you know, trying to survive through it because it seems like every day there's something new. You know, it's just been oh, cray, cray. It's just been cray. I like that. I just, that's my word all the time now because it's just, the world has just gone cray. But one of the things <laughs> I like to say is this. I like to bring up a synopsis, okay? So we know that the pandemic was horrible. There was a lockdown. People died. People lost limbs. Um, people uh have long term covid uh people are were just you know sad depressed and all this stuff but there are there were pros there still are pros um in regards to the pandemic you know a lot of times people are living a fast paced life this allowed people to slow down just a bit and i guess people married people got to know each other one uh, during that time cuz they had to really live together and see one another. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there was no escape. <laughs> there was no escape. Um, but there were, you know what I saw? I saw a lot of family members walking together, which is not supposed to be crazy, but it is because I just don't see that around here that much anymore. I had colleagues that um, decided to cut back on work because they realized they weren't spending enough time with their family members. Um, the pollution level went down because we were not in it. The trees, the, you know, and Mother Nature and the animals were just like, oh, my gosh, I hope these people don't come back. Um, there were a lot of people <laughs> that quit their jobs. There were a lot of articles on that. I think people decided, look, yeah. I need to do something that's not just about money. I need to be happy doing what I'm doing. So I think there was a lot of Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So there was a lot of self-reflection. Um so, and artists, thank God there were artists that released albums, EPs, tracks, singles. They rebranded. They decided they don't want to do this stuff anymore. There was a lot of self-introspection going on. So, my question to you is, did you take time to self-introspect? 
did you decide, okay, I know who I am as an artist. I'm going to stay this way. Or did you decide to rebrand? Did you, did you change anything at all? Or are you, are you just Megan? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great question. And I feel like I owe my time spent during the height of the pandemic to who I am as an artist today. I mean, I, I daytime as a school teacher and mm-hmm. I remember March 13th, we were sitting in a baby shower for one of my coworkers and we got the announcement that everyone was going home. And right. then we just found out that we weren't going back for a while. And um, mm-hmm. I, I had the very unique opportunity to use that time to, to really reconnect with a part of myself that I felt like I had lost. You know, I, I moved out of state um, I had to leave behind a lot of who I was as a musician, as a professional in the workforce, um, my friends, my family, you know, to take this new job. And I feel like in that process, I really lost a lot of myself and I lost a lot of my direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but during the, uh, during the early stages of the pandemic, I went hiking. I mm-hmm. spent time camping. I traveled um, by myself, of course, but I spent a lot of time outside and um, I came back home and spent some time with my family. Like you had said, a lot of people were spending more time with their families yeah. at home. And I, I rediscovered um, a part of myself that I thought was long gone, you know, since the move. And during the pandemic, I had the chance to really sit down and think about where I wanted to go as an artist. And I had the chance to sit down and think about what makes me happy and what do I really want to spend the rest of my life doing and how am I going to be able to give myself or leave a part of myself on this, on this earth when I'm gone. And I had the chance to, um, you know, to go back to some material that I had tabled and I was able to finish some songs that I had started writing. I was able to um, challenge myself as an artist really to adapt to the new way of sharing music with other people when I can't go out and play gigs, when I can't do shows or concerts. And I had to figure out how do I share my craft with people when I can't see them. Um, which I really feel has strengthened myself as an artist, as you know, you have mentioned as an independent artist, a Mm. lot of times you are your own promoter, you are your own content creator, you're your own writer, you know, you have to wear a lot of hats. And I had the chance to really learn how to be a lot of those things for myself when that's all that I had time to do. Um, And I had the chance to connect with artists, around the country and around the world. I, I was able to record um, a song with a gentleman, Tony Esquire, uh, who lives in the UK. And we would not have connected had it not been for the pandemic, you know, forcing us to find a new way to reach each other. And so I think that it, it really provided me with the opportunity to say, okay, this is something that really makes me happy. This is something that I really want to do and that I'm really passionate about. And I am going to find a way to make a career out of this essentially, and to be able to share this with other people. That's great. Um, I'm glad you took the time to self reflect. I mean, if I think a lot of people took that time. I mean, we have so much time on our hands. And I think one of the things that a lot of people learned was that, you know, people need people, you know, it's, it's, Absolutely. it's great that we had Zoom and all that stuff, but people need physical touch, whether it's just touching somebody's hand or it's a hug or whatever else, people need that in their lives. I remember when the pandemic first hit, there was a guy in the UK that I guess he was an extrovert and needed to be around people. He just couldn't take it. He ended up killing himself, which is a downer. <laughs> um, oh but gosh. It, it really made you realize that it's important to have people in your life. You know, it's just this whole solitude thing, it, which is very crazy. And mm-hmm. if you were able to, you know, have family members around you, you weren't by yourself, you learn more about your family members and, um, 
about which could your... sometimes be good and sometimes <laughs> be not so great. <laughs> yeah, we meant, we meant to that. We meant to that. Um, yeah. And it, it was something that the whole world was involved in, so everybody understood what everybody else is going going what was going on in their lives so you know I think this is one time in life where we can all say yes I know how that felt because I went through it too now (laughs) you touched on something that's very important is this whole and I'm just going to I usually talk about this at the end but I'm going to talk about it now the whole aspect of being you know you're one you're one person and you have all these hats that you wear you're the manager you're the publicist um you're the promoter the marketer, you do everything mm-hmm. for yourself. And it takes a lot of time to do all that stuff. And one of the things oh, I agree with that the pandemic allowed for me to do as well as you is to learn different ways to market and promote um, our the music because that's a 24 seven job. It is ridiculous. We have to be on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. I didn't even want to be on TikTok, but now I'm really on it. It's crazy. Um, I yeah, said the same yeah. thing to my younger sister because she, I, oh. my little, my youngest sister told me that's the way to connect with the younger generation. And I actually, I was just having a conversation with, um, with my guitarist about this, about how you, you know, the way that you choose to market yourself is so yeah. important, and you yeah. really have to play to the, um, you know what what's trending in terms of the con the style of content you know yeah. right now it's it's the reels on instagram or the shorter tiktoks like you you have right. to play to that and you have to adapt and as an artist that that's a challenge it's hard it is it is an extreme challenge and the thing so i was with this management company I was like oh now you should do this i need to do this every day and i'm like really i have to do this oh my gosh how am i going to do this i don't know <laughs> I don't have this kind of energy or time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't have this kind of energy or time. And what am I going to say? (laughs) How many videos? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? So, you know, during the pandemic, I actually took some classes. I actually took this course. um, It was TikTok University. It's TikTok Cap University, in which they were teaching you, okay, what styles are good, blah, blah, blah. And one of the things they said is that if you're doing TikTok, you need to do five videos per day. Did you hear me? Per day. Oh, my day. gosh. That's so much. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. They said your videos don't have to be that long, but you need to do at least five vid- videos a day. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to say? I mean, there's st- what am I going to do? What am I going to say? It's just like, okay, I have all this. I, I, I have a large catalog. I, I have some music out there, but come on. Then I had to become, you just have to become inventive. You really have to sit down and really think, I just started to pray, I meditate, whatever. I said, please, somebody give me some ideas for this mess. And it start, and then some of the <laughs> ideas started to flow. I would I would look at the, the lyrics that I wrote and say, okay, maybe I could do a video based on this. Or I could do a little script based on this, because my music is social impact. And I'm like, okay, let me do this. And this is good. And, um, and then it started to flow. I still didn't like to do TikTok, but then it started to flow. But one of the things that the university teaches you is that the videos that do the best are the ones where people are being extremely authentic. Authenticity is the biggest thing, and it will remain for the longest time. Because mm-hmm. with these videos, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Reels, or whatever, people like to see normal people doing stuff. Even independent they consider those people very normal. Okay, so if you're just getting on TikTok and you're just you had a bad day and you're just talking about it, that could get millions of views. This is what people like. Why? It's because people can relate to that. They don't relate to uh, exactly mainstream artists. They say, oh, yeah, yeah, they, because in their head, they don't think, well, I can achieve that. Da, da. But if you're a regular person trying to do your thing or you're trying to show somebody a new dish or a new outfit or whatever the case may be. They love that stuff. That's just you being extremely authentic. You're not trying to push anything on on anybody else. Now, the thing with music, and I've told all of the people that come on my podcast, is this. Is that now, when you are creating music, it's something that you said. When you are creating music, you have to see whether that song that you're writing is going to be able to fit on these different platforms. 
music has evolved. It's not just, oh, let's mm-hmm. create a song, you know, we'll promote it, this, that, and the other. Now it's all about how is this going to work on, on, on the internet, okay? And all these platforms, mm-hmm. how is this going to move? We have to figure all that out. So there's a different dynamic that has been added to what we need to do with our music, which makes things a lot crazier. So when it, comes, when it comes to TikTok, all you have to do is think about, you know, one of the songs that you've written and say, okay, how can I put this? You could do, even do a little short video. You can do three a three minute video on your song. You could do 15, 15, 15 seconds. You can do 60 minutes. Oh, 60 minutes. You can do one minute. And you can just really think, I had to really start thinking about, okay, how am I going to do this? Um, the whole marketing promoting, same. It's just insane. Everything that we have to do just to be heard. And see. I've seen people to do a five second video and it's got millions of views, which baffles me, but it got, it has millions of views. Now, the question Oh, I know. For- I think that all the time. <laughs> like if I were to say <laughs> something like that, there's no way. There's no and, way that it would get that kind of attention. And the person just sneezes. I swear. I swear. They just sneeze. It's like, okay, four million views. You're thinking, oh, okay. So how, exactly. Like, what am I missing here? <laughs> what am I exactly? I'm like, okay. Well, I kind of tried to do the same thing, but I'm not getting all the. You know, there's algorithms and all that stuff. I don't have time for that crap. But um, mm-hmm. so how no, do you? It's- <laughs> How do you do your thing? How do you market and promote your music? Oh my gosh! Well, <laughs> like you said, I it, you have to be constantly paying attention to to what's trending, and you have to be willing to adapt. Like music is the way that you share music. Like you said, is it's changing. It's constantly changing, and especially during the pandemic, you know, the online presence aspect of being a musician increased significantly and now it seems that that's going to continue to be the trend moving forward and I I saw an artist post on Instagram once that she said everything is content and so when I when I'm going through my day now I, I try to think of you know what I could share with people that could be considered content it's just it's a part of my thought process now like if I'm going um you know, if I'm going to a songwriting session, like, is there something that I'm doing with, with my band that I could be posting as content? Could I be posting the rehearsal process, the writing process, the like behind the scenes type content, you know? Um, and so I, I try to look for different things that I could share that could be considered, you know, content worthy. Um, I see that, you know, following what is trending, the the reels are really what a lot of social media platforms are pushing now and so i try to find ways to to fit my songs into you know those um 15 30 60 second reels but it's a challenge because i feel like and i'm sure that you can relate you have so much that you want to share and it's hard to think about how i can trim this down to 15 30 or 60 seconds but um you know i i've I'm very fascinated by how, you know, by human processing. And there has been a trend over the last, you know, couple of years where they're seeing that the attention spans of the younger generations are shrinking. And so that's why a lot of the shorter reels and shorter content pieces are more successful because you have this immediate access to everything. And so you don't have to focus on one thing for more than five or 10 seconds at a time because you can go right to something else as soon as you lose interest. So you also have to be thinking about, okay, how can I be sure that I capture this person's attention for at least 10 seconds? What is, what 10 seconds of what I want to share is the most captivating? Um, So when I'm thinking about what to post, I, I try to collectively keep all of those things in mind and it's it's very difficult um hmm. but it's the way, it's the yeah. way that it is and if if you want as and especially as an independent artist you know hmm. if you want to have a chance at being seen or have a chance at being heard you have to try to make those changes and make those adaptations yeah or you're going to uh, get left behind but you're a hundred percent right because I have a lot of fr- I have some friends that are independent artists and they're like I don't like people in my business. <laughs> I don't want to have. To. Right. 
that are really more of ex- um, introverts. And I'm like, well, then you need to decide what you want to do with your music because the thing is, you want you want people to stream your music, you want people to pay for your music. Well, you have to give them a little bit of yourself. That's just, that's just the whole deal. It's been like that. It's right. that it's that way for actors. You know, it's that it's that it's that way for artistry. Period. Is that people want to mm-hmm. get to know the person that's that's creating. They want to. Um, gravitate to somebody that they can relate to that's going to give them hope you know during this the past three years there there was all this stuff about fake news and stuff like that and I think that um, people had the time to really listen to music and so they gravitated towards independent music more during the independent Mm -hmm. during the the pandemic Um, and so because they felt like okay this is real what they're singing about is real I can I can feel this I can feel this in their voice um it really moves me. It really it speaks to my life. And I think that's right. what people are looking for um, in their lives, whether there is a social impact, love, um, relationship problems, whether you hate your job or whatever the case may be, people want to know somebody else is going, going through those things and thinking about it, and then it's going to make them feel better. This is what absolutely, you know, and I, I think going back to what you said about you know during the pandemic we lost the ability to have that in person connection with somebody, and I think that a lot of people really started to turn to personalities and influencers and musicians online as a way to look for someone who who gets it, someone who okay this person really understands what I'm feeling or is going through the same thing that I am and. Going back to what you said about posting content that is relatable, I -hmm. think that during the past two or three years, you know, people who haven't been able to go out and make those connections in person have really been turning to platforms online to try to find that, um, that, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, But they're (laughs) looking for, you know, someone to say, I'm there with you. I yes. get what you're going through, and I I'm here. Exactly. So you know, you understand. I mean, one of the things that I keep telling artists all the time is that music is our superpower. People don't really understand how much, yeah, music. How music can help another individual, whether it you know makes them happy, sad, angry, or whatever. It lets it lets them allows them to vent, allows them to feel. And it allows them to make, make make them feel better sometimes. You know what I mean? They're just like, okay, I've listened yeah. to this song. I can go throughout my day. I feel a lot better. Um, and I like telling this story. Um, I met this woman, and um, uh, she was she had a performance, and it went well. And then this, after the performance, this man came up to her. I said, I really loved your performance. It was fantastic. Um, I just want to tell you something. I was going to go home and kill myself, but <clears throat> after listening to your performance, no, I, uh. yeah, after listening to your performance, I've changed my mind. I have a new lease on life. So, oh see, my gosh. Just, yeah, people just don't know how music or anything that you do can affect somebody else's life in in a positive right. way, especially music. Oh, of course. You know, music, I feel, is like the space where we all can get along. We all can get along. And so I think a lot of artists need to remember that. You know, I always, you know, there every day I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do this music thing. Oh, my God, it's so much work. This is, it gives me a headache. And then somebody will call or I'll get an email or this and that. And then it's a reminder, no, it's important what you're doing, what you're singing about, because it's helping somebody else out in the world. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like you said, you never know how you, what you share can affect or impact somebody. I, I've always held on to the mentality throughout the progression of my career that if what I put out there is able to impact one person, if one person hears yeah. something that I write or that I share and it means something to them, then I feel like I've done my, my, my job as, a, as an artist, right. as a creator, because I was able to make something that mattered to somebody. Exactly. My whole thing is um, to, I want to be an effective player in life. I want to make a difference. So I agree with you on that point. Now, what made you decide uh, to get into the music industry? Was it something that you heard, you saw, 
Or did you just come out of the womb saying you're just a musician coming out of the womb? <laughs> well, I, well, if we're going back that far, uh, my dad took my mom to see a Pink Floyd concert whenever she was pregnant with me. So it could have been, it very well could have been something that occurred in the womb. Um, but I, I've I've really been into music since I was very young. You know, my dad is a is a huge contributor to who I am as an artist. He turned me on to so many of the bands that I draw inspiration from. You know, you mentioned at the beginning Frank Zappa, um, Elton John. Yes, like those weren't bands that kids my age at any point were listening to. And so it was. I, I was just so drawn to how it made me feel to listen to something that someone put a lot of time into creating. And I, I I started playing the piano whenever I was about four years old and I started taking lessons in kindergarten and that really, really started it for me. Um, You know, I went to my uh, piano teacher and I asked him to teach me how to play Van Morrison's and it stoned me when I was like six or seven years old and he laughed at me. He's like, how do you know that song? (laughs) Um, But (laughs) I I guess, you know, it it really started from there. And as I got older, um, I found that music was a really great way to to connect with people and writing music was a great way for me to express how I felt. You know, I I've always been a very introverted person, I say, with extroverted qualities. So I I can come across as extroverted, but I really just don't like being around people. (laughs) And I, so I I always struggled with being able to share with people how I felt and being able to write music or even without any lyrics, write something on the piano um, that I felt could encapsulate how I felt was a very freeing experience. And as I got into high school and into college, you know, I started to get involved in theater and acting and performing and being able to step into the shoes of somebody else and to pretend to be someone else and to become that other personality for just a little while. And like I said, it was just such a freeing experience for me. And uh, when I joined my first band, when I was a sophomore in college, um, I knew that I knew that that was it for me. I went and I played my first show. Um, we opened for uh, um, John Hall, who is the front man for the band Orleans at the at Club Cafe in Pittsburgh. And just being able to perform in front of an audience and know that they are listening and know that they were there and they were present with what we were sharing was just something I can't put into words. And so I, I, I was hooked to, uh, into performing from that moment on, but it really started when I, I was younger. You know, I would just listen to the music my dad would put on in the truck and allow myself to be present with how that music made me feel. And that has really what has driven me over the years, I would say. All right. Now, how important is it for you to be authentic in your music and as a person? That's a great question. I, I've always said that I, I've i never aspired to become like this big famous artist. You know, I, I've never wanted to play sold out arenas or to, you know, go multi-platinum or anything like that. I, I just want to be able to create something that's, that's true to me and that can be meaningful to somebody else. I, uh, went to a meeting with a producer, actually, um, I think it was last year in Florida, and he told me, if you ever want to be successful as a musician, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to look like this and sound like that. And that really struck me because I I don't want to be what someone else tells me. I don't want to right. play what someone else tells me to play. I want to be able to create, perform what's true to me. And so I think that as an artist and as an independent artist, I, I have the freedom to continue to be true to myself and true to my craft. And I've always said that I'm never going to sell myself out. <laughs> if right. I am given the opportunity to, you know, take a deal with B 
the condition that I have to start dressing like this or I have to start singing right. songs about that. I, I couldn't bring myself to do it because I feel like I wouldn't be staying true to why I got into this in the first place. And there are so many people out there who, especially now, who feel like they have to look or they have to sound a certain way in order for people to pay attention to them or for their music to matter. And I want to be someone for the, you know, for the people like me when I was younger who can see that someone who stays true to themselves can still do something that makes them really happy and it can still matter to people. Right. I agree 100%. 100%. Now, I am going to <laughs> your song, one of your songs here, Hear Me on the Radio. What is that about? This was uh, my very first single that I released. Um, it was right before the pandemic. Um, but uh, I, I wrote this song um, about a year after I had gotten out of a really – rough relationship situation um there was a guy that I was seeing and he basically told me I remember we were sitting in his car it was after um, my very first musical performance in college I was so excited because I had I had a lead role and it was my first show and he said I don't like the person that you are when you do this and essentially he gave me oh it crushed me it was like a knife in my stomach and he just kept turning it. It was awful. I I can, I don't think I'll ever be able to forget the way that, that I felt when he said that to me, but a year after we had separated, um, I wrote, hear me on the radio as a way to say that I'm still going to be a musician and you're going to hear me on the radio someday. You're going to hear that I'm still doing this, even though you gave me the ultimatum. And you told me it's me or the music. I chose the music. <laughs> and this was the song that I wrote to show him that this was my choice. Good for you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> From the wrath of your words, Dave. I've got to tell you 
Yep. So everything in that song is very true. I don't know why people have to be so douchey. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> exactly. I I should have I should have called it quit. Well, honest honestly, I could have should have called it quits that night, but it didn't for some reason. I let it drag out um, for a little nice. while after that. But that that should have been the night that I walked. But because you're nice, I wish I had a good song to come from it. I guess. <laughs> I I feel that you're very sweet and nice, and that's why. That is why. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I just shut up. <laughs> no, I can no. be the one to change him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, no yeah, so if no. I could if I could go back and talk to my younger self, believe me. No, we'd have not. some very strong words. I feel you, I feel you. Uh, <laughs> uh but Everything you said is true in that song. We all have been through it, so don't worry. We all have been through it. Um, <laughs> what do you love most about being an artist? Oh, man. Um, I, you know, I, I really don't think I could have answered that until right after I started performing again, after restrictions were starting to be lifted for the first time. I, I remember my first show that I played um, was for an event promoter in Pittsburgh. And just the the joy that I felt being able to music and to be a part of enhancing the experience that other people were having, I it's just unmatched. I think that one of my favorite things about being an artist is just being able to take ownership of something that I, that I created or even taking a song that I didn't create and making it mine by adding my own spin on it and being able to share that with people. I, I think that has to, that has to be my favorite thing. Uh, my second favorite thing though, close behind it would definitely be the connections that yes. I've had the chance to make. I mean, I, I've made dozens of friends um, with people that live all across the country, I, I never would have had the opportunity to meet the people that I have had I not, you know, gotten into music or had I not committed myself to being an artist. I, right. And some of these people I know are going to be my friends for the rest of my life. And I just, I can't imagine what my life would be if, if we hadn't crossed paths and we wouldn't have had I not had the chance to to pursue being a musician full time. So that's definitely a very close second, I would say. I love it. Now, wh what is your writing process like and how do you deal with a uh, writer's block if you get it? Oh, I get it all the time. I have books and books of, of songs that I, I have started or snippets of things that I'm like, that would be really cool in a song that I write down and then it sits for, years and years and years and then I don't come back to it again <laughs> um so my writing process it's interesting because I I feel that inspiration can come from anywhere and I feel like I am a testament to that because I could be sitting at a restaurant and an idea for my for a song could come into my head while I'm eating and I'll write it down on a napkin and I'm like oh I gotta save that for later or I'm driving in my car and I think of a riff and I'm like, oh, I got to record that so that I can come back to it later. So I'll pull out, you know, when I'm in a safe space, I'll stop, I'll pull out my phone, I'll record the riff right. that I had in my head and just save it for later. Um, but for me, I can't write a song in one sitting. It's something that usually comes to me in bits and pieces. Uh, and I'll never start at the beginning. I'll, most of the time, I'll, I'll start at the end of a song and I'll work backwards. Okay. I find that the most challenging thing for me is finding, um, finding a way to start a song. Um, so I usually, once I, I have something going, it'll sit for a while because I can't think of a way to start it or a good way to bring somebody in. Like if I mm -hmm. put myself in the position of the listener, I think what's going to make, what's going to make me keep listening. What's going right. to keep me from changing the song to something else and I always get stuck on that so 
a lot of times when I do write something, it'll sit because I can't think of a good introduction. Uh, but the process, like I said, I'll usually start from the end and I'll work to the beginning and I'll save that for last. And I find that I write a lot of my, a lot of my best material I've written in the car, you know, as, um, as a traveling musician, I, I drive a lot. I fly a lot. I, I am all over the place all the time. This is a very rare instance this evening where I am actually at my house and I'm not driving to a gig or a rehearsal or something somewhere. Um, so I, I spend a lot of time on the road and I feel like a lot of my best material comes from my time when I'm traveling and I don't have anything else to do but sit and think about what I want to write next. Yeah, I completely get that. All right. Well, next I'm going to play your song, Long Dirt Road. Tell me what that's about. Oh, so this is a new one and one that I feel if executed properly. I feel like this is the song that could be like my magnum opus, if you okay. will. Um, like that song that you as an artist you you feel like you work years and years and years to write song the song right. and i in my in the post production this is going to have steel guitar and it's going to have a chorus of voices at the end and it's there's just so many small intricate parts to it that i feel if it's executed right it's going to just be I'm so excited about the potential, but I, I started writing the song whenever I was on vacation, actually, this year. I was in South Carolina, and I got the idea um, for writing something about the summers that I used to spend uh, with my friends in my hometown, which is a very, you know, sounds like a very stereotypical intro to a uh, country song, Um but I wanted to write something that I felt could pay homage to where I came from and the people that really inspired me growing up and the things we used to do together. And so I wrote Long Dirt Road as a way to do that and also to give, hopefully, the people who listen to it a way to kind of reflect back on the parts of themselves that used to be and how that contributed to who they are now. Here we go, Long Dirt Road.
live rendition of it. I wasn't expecting the the ending <laughs> part. Um, that was actually uh, at a music festival I played at out in Seattle a couple weeks ago. Um, that was the first time that I had the chance to to play that song out. So um, that just kind of caught me off guard at the end. I wasn't expecting the the people's voices. And... <laughs> cool, it's cool. Um, well, lastly, what are three things you wish you had known about the music business before you got into the music business? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I guess I would have to say that, well, one, every opportunity is an opportunity that you should take. I, especially this year, I have tried to take advantage of any performance opportunity, big or small, Right. No matter how far, as long as I'm able to travel, um, of course, as long as it's safe. Uh, but you never know who you, who you could run into there, who could be listening. And so I guess there are a lot of opportunities that I feel I, I passed up on when I was first becoming really serious about being a musician. And I wish that I would have known to take advantage of more of those. Um, when I was first starting out because like I said, you never know who you could run into or who could be there, who could be listening. Um, The second thing, make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. I know over the past couple of years, I've really been trying to make sure that I surround myself with people who share the same vision as me. And very recently I started the quest, if you will, of, finding um finding my band and i i really feel like in talking with the um with that i've been speaking to i really feel like i've got the right group with me now but it wasn't always like that you know i when i was first starting out i just took the first person who expressed interest and it wasn't always the best way to go because we um, there were a couple instances where um, there were some pretty big decisions that needed to be made, and we just didn't see eye to eye, which is fine. Um, but I just I wish I would have taken more time to get to know the people that I was working with um, early on and the people that I was surrounding myself with. 
And that's really a, a piece of advice I'd give to anyone who is looking to get into the industry. You know, make sure that you aren't compromising what your vision is to right. meet someone in the middle somewhere, you know. Um, and I guess uh, something else that I wish I would have known is how much time and energy and effort it was going to take. Uh, at When I really first started to become serious about pursuing music as a career full time, I, I actually experienced a period of burnout and it was before the pandemic had started. So I guess um, that also gave me the chance to rediscover in addition to myself to give me the chance to rediscover my love of music in general. Um, but I got so caught up in everything that I felt I needed to do and everything that I needed to be, you know, I had to keep up with the website. I had to make sure that I was calling places to book shows. I had to keep my EPK up to date and I had to make sure that I was writing and I had to make sure that I was sending those emails and calling those people. And um, it was a very humbling experience for me to be able to sit down and stop doing that so that I had the chance to really look at what this was going to take from me in terms of my time and my effort and set really a very realistic expectations for myself in terms of how much of me I was going to be giving to this. I, I wouldn't change anything. Of course, I, I love every minute of what I do. And I love that I get to tell people that I'm a full time musician. And that this is a, this is my career. And it, it just it tickles me to be able to say that to people and to mean it. And, you know, with all of the highs and lows, you know, considered, I, I really wouldn't trade this for anything. It's It's been an incredible ride. And I can't wait to see where we continue to go from here. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, I have to say that music has always also been my saving grace. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work every day. And then I'm like, it's my saving grace, but can I do it? And I'm always, the answer is always yes. At the end of the day, um, music Absolutely. is a place that I love, just like you. Um, you know, one of the things I wish I had learned before getting into the music industry, you know, how many scammers come after I mean it's almost like they can smell you when you first start out in the music industry oh, yeah absolutely they jump, you. <laughs> they jump on you like oh she's finished I can try to get some money out of her I can tell her she will be famous if she works with me um that kind of be oh yeah uh, that's one of the biggest ones for me um but you, you know, definitely can't take everything that everyone says for face value anymore no you cannot you cannot so uh and I always tell people to do your due diligence, do your research on people. If somebody comes out and telling you you have to fork over money or you have to do this, that, and the other, uh, do your research. Talk to people that have worked with them. See, you know, what's happened, uh, if they really do what they say they're going to do. But never give anybody money that says that they can do something for you. They're supposed to do it themselves. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the whole point of that. Um, what's, the, what's next for you? Before I let you go. Sure. Um, so I uh, actually was just nominated for multi -vo multi genre vocalist of the year through the Josie Awards in Nashville, and yeah. the Josie Awards are kind of like the um, the Grammys for independent artists. It gives them a chance to have their night, and I was very honored to receive a nomination this year. Um, so I'll be traveling to Nashville in October. Um, and I will be at the Grand Ole Opry to hopefully accept, um, hopefully accept an award for multi-genre vocalist of the year, which would be pretty cool. Uh, if not, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there for the ceremony and to just be a part of the experience is, is an honor in itself. Uh, I was also, um, recently nominated for, um, best unsigned artist and Americana artist in Pittsburgh, which is my hometown. Okay. And I will find out about that at the end of September. Um, I'm also getting ready to uh, release an EP later this fall. I don't have a set date yet, but I'm really shooting for the end of October uh, or the beginning of November. I just took Long Dirt Road and another song, Uninvited, into the studio last Thursday, and we laid the groundwork for those two songs. And um, I'm really excited to finally have some new music to share with people because I feel that, <laughs> 
especially with the social media aspect of things, you can feel a lot of pressure to constantly be putting out. But Amen. I am very, per- very particular about how I want things to sound. And I don't like to put out a product if I don't feel like it's my best work. So I, I don't have a lot out because I feel like there's more that I can do to mm. better what I have. Um, okay. And I finally feel like I'm getting there with a lot of this, this content that I am making in the studio and taking to studio. So I'm really excited about that and to share that with people um, that hopefully I'll have an official release date uh, sometime in the next couple weeks, you know, once we start uh, getting the other instrumentation laid down and we can set a real, a more realistic timeline or a more specific timeline for that. Um, But other than that, just, you know, playing out as much as I'm able um, with my band, we're, doing a couple shows in Pittsburgh um, in the next couple of weeks. And um, I'm going to be in North Carolina in November, which is exciting. I've never been down there to play before. Uh, but all of my show information, um, you know, is available on my website. So if people want to continue to follow my journey, that is where they can go. That is awesome. Um, so you mentioned the Josie Music Awards. Well, uh Nikki and I, um, we will have, our, so I've been to the, all of them, all eight years. Well, this is eight year. I've been to all the Josie Music Awards and I um, have won each time. Um, and I have performed twice at the Josie Music Awards and uh, Sisters in Music. That's wonderful. Yeah, thanks. And Sisters in Music will be there. Um, we're part of the festival. So come and see us. Or not a, we have people that are performing. Nikki and I are performing on the stage as well. As I don't know when awesome. you're coming. Yeah, it'll be on that. When is that? Twenty second is when we're. Yeah, that's when the uh, the festival, the JMA Fest is. Um, also, mm-hmm. I've been nominated. Well, I'm just telling you that so that we will definitely see each other um, out there. I will see you definitely oh, next. month. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, it's a good time really good time. I've known uh, Josie and Tina for many years now, and they're really good people, and you'll get to network and meet lots of cool people. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to meet with you in person. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much, Megan, for being on Chatting with Nat. I really appreciate you being on the show. I learned a lot more. You have great music. I really love the song about hear it on the radio because that's oh, like, thank you. in your face. <laughs> it's like, yeah. in your face. You see what you love? So I absolutely love exactly that song. Exactly what I was going for. Yes. I love both songs. Thank you songs. so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. This, this has been wonderful. Anytime. All right, everybody. This was Chatting with Nat with Singer-songwriter Megan Paulette. She's amazing. Um, her website is www.meganpaulettemusic.com. Megan, pa- Megan Paulette Music is on Facebook. Instagram is the same thing. She's on Spotify. She's on TikTok. She's got a YouTube. And if you don't remember that, you got a Google. I'm getting a T-shirt that says Google me because it's just easier because we are on so many damn platforms. We can't remember all of them. All right, until next time on Chatting with Matt. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. If you're a Kia K5 GT and Kia Forte GT owner, this is your reminder to breathe. See that sophisticated interior? Enjoy those sensations. And now, imagine how you look from the outside and that speed that only a Kia GT sedan can give you. Sorry, I can't help but get excited. For those life full of thrilling emotions, the all-powerful, all-fun Kia GT sedan. Kia. 
movement that inspires. Limited inventory available. Call 800-333-4KIA for details. Always drive safely. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BDW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.